So essentially, whenever anyone is asked to, to describe food or they ask a question of, of someone else about the food that they happen to be eating, you'll almost always hear them talk about uh, the taste, whether it's the saltiness, the sweetness, the bitterness, etc. Uh, it might be something about the smell or the beautiful bouquet of the, the food that they're eating. Um, or sometimes they talk about the texture in their mouth as well. Uh, very rarely, though, will people talk about the actual visual aspects and particularly the colour. There is some research that looks at the influence of colour on smell. However, we found that there was, there was almost nothing that had looked at the influence of colour on the perceived texture in your mouth. So when we started this research, we actually, uh, we actually used a, a whole range of products and we found that colour also influences the, the texture of the food, in particular the creaminess and crunchiness when you consume a product. Um, what we did was we then took that to the next dimension and said um, maybe we get the same effects if we, if we change the colour of the products uh, in an advertising context. And we, we had similar sort of results in that colour was found to influence the expected texture, uh, particularly the creaminess and crunchiness, of the food product just by looking at the, the advertisement. We used a whole range of products including um, yoghurt, custard, sour cream and mayonnaise just to ensure that it wasn't necessarily the product that was causing the effect, it was the actual colour. So in the advertisements we had, we had a similar sort of situation, although the thing that we, uh, we changed um, or manipulated more or less was the appearance. So whether it was a crunchier looking product or a creamier, so a creamier potato salad maybe, as opposed to what would be a, a sort of a crunchier um, advertisement or an advertisement of a crunchier cookie. And and what we found was that the, the red product would, would sort of skew towards the expected creaminess and the blue filters over the product um, made, made people sort of more predisposed to thinking that there was a crunchier product. To look at the influence of colour when people are actually consuming the product, uh, you know, we had a, a, a whole range of experiments where we manipulated the colour, so it was either red and blue of the different food products, as well as the textures. So some of the products were uh, definitely crunchier and some of them were, were definitely uh, constructed to be creamier um, because we wanted to see if there was an interaction between the 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 colour and the actual texture of the product um, in determining, you know, the person's experience. There's an, an international standard for flavour, which is, you know, it basically says that flavour consists of the taste that comes through your mouth, the smell that comes through your nose, and then the, the texture that you experience inside your mouth. It may be that, that colour or, or vision is actually the fourth dimension of flavour that no one has really um, considered just because it's so intuitive and obvious and having identified the effect it would now be up to the brand managers and the food scientists that work with them to, uh, to find out the sweet spot for their particular product and the product attributes that they're trying to communicate. This goes right through the right through the line. So what you would be thinking is that, or if a brand manager and a team of uh, food scientists have a product in mind and they want to position it in the market as having very particular kinds of um, product attributes, in in our situation it would be a creaminess or a crunchiness. Uh, what they really need to look at is the colour of the product that they're developing from the get go needs to be. A congruent with the product attributes that they're trying to communicate. What you would also then think about is um, packaging, point of sale uh, materials that, that, that actually are occurring in the shopping centres or the supermarkets. You may want them to be a certain, a certain look. Um, and then all of the communications that you have and the marketing collateral that you provide um, as we've seen, the, the colour of the advertisements will distinctly influence the, the consumer expectations. Now, what we also found in our, uh, in our research is that the types of language that you use to describe it also has an influence on the effect of the colour. 
So there is a there is a you know based on a, a, a kind of condition or a, a finding called Stroop interference, um, where the colour and the language actually uh, interact to influence your, your perception.